Hello everyone, uh, I am uh, Anapa. I work as the uh, ODP tech lead at R. So uh, today's topic is uh, ODP for uh, NFV. Uh, I think uh, uh, as uh, uh, part of the ODP community, we have done a great job of addressing the uh, uh, embedded network uh, network in the SOC market. Uh, as we have heard through different presentations, uh, networking is uh, moving into uh, virtualization and uh, net, the, the virtualized networking uh, functions getting created. So uh, we'll see in this session uh, what ODP has to address that uh, uh, new uh, segment that's emerging. So uh, in this session, we'll first look at uh, what are all the different challenges uh, that ODP has to address. Then we'll look at a uh, high-level design, and uh, uh, we'll take a look at uh, uh, the current status and uh, a few next steps that uh, we would like to uh, take. So uh, in order to understand the challenges uh, ODP has to uh, address, uh, let's take a uh, look at a very simplified view of a uh, NFV environment. So typically, uh, what you have is you have a source switch running on bare metal, and then you have got VMs or containers on which you run the uh, uh, network functions. So in order to gain high throughput and uh, low latency, we need to have uh, a data plane uh, acceleration. So this is where we need data plane acceleration in this environment. The first one is for the source switch uh, uh, running on bare metal. Uh, and then we need data plane acceleration for the uh, uh, VNFs as well. And this is where ODP comes into uh, ODP would like to uh, provide solutions for data plane acceleration in all these uh, areas. So now, if we go a little, little bit deeper into this uh, uh, framework, uh, in this environment, what we see is we have a hardware platform, and it is not known during build time of the application whether it's a networking SOC with built-in accelerators and mix, or is it a server platform with pluggable uh, uh, you know, mix and accelerators. We don't know that at uh, build time. And then if we look at the uh, pluggable peripherals, we don't know who is the vendor for that. It's not known during uh, build time. And if we go up the stack, uh, you know, it becomes very clear that you know, this application could be running on a bare metal or it could be running on a VM or container. And if it is running on a VM or container, we don't know what is the network interface. It could be a virtio network device or it could be a virtual function device or it could be a, a directly assigned device. So all these things are not known to us during build time. So what I am trying to come at is the platform and the various components of the platform are known during runtime. They are not known during build time. So we need to be able to have a single application binary that can identify what platform it is and what are all the different components in the platform and be able to run on all these different environments. So this is the challenge that ODP has to address. So uh, now going into um, a high level design uh, of uh, how we are achieving this in ODP. So right now what we have got is, uh, right now when I mean right now the uh, uh, ODP uh, for the embedded uh, uh, market. We have got the application, and then we have got the ODP APIs, and we have got various implementations of those APIs. So in order to address the 
uh, ENFB environment, we are making use of the modular framework that he introduced. So using this modular framework, we are writing, we are implementing subsystems for all of these ODP components. And then what we, are, what we have done is we have these two key uh, uh, blocks, the platform discovery and module load. So the platform discovery uh, during runtime, it identifies what platform it is in, it identifies different characteristics of it, and then you know maps that to corresponding libraries. So once the uh, platform discovery module is done running, you know you have a set of these libraries that are supposed to run or work on that target platform at runtime. Then you take those set of libraries and the module loader loads those libraries and registers the functions that are provided by each of these components into the subsystem. So that's how the application gets access to the implementation on that target platform. So, uh, one minor point that I wanted to, uh, you know, I would say a good point that I wanted to uh, point out here is the modular framework allows us to uh, pick and choose components from uh, different libraries. For example, if there's a SOC that doesn't have, uh, you know, let's say a timer uh, block uh, implemented in hardware, it can choose that module from the software libraries. So we can do that at runtime, the uh, modular framework and the uh, uh, platform discovery uh, uh, modules allow us to do that. So, so this is the solution for SOCs. Now what do we have for the server uh, platforms? So in the server platform, there are two main uh, issues that we need to solve. One is the server platform does not have any hardware accelerators uh, which are built in. So we have to use software components. So the platform discovery module has to identify that and it has to make sure that you know, the software libraries are chosen. The second major problem that we have to solve is uh, you know, the server platform has got these pluggable uh, peripherals, NICs, and uh, you know, uh, accelerators like crypto uh, accelerators. So we need to be able to identify those devices, identify the corresponding uh, drivers, load those drivers, and then register the functions into the subsystems uh, uh, that we have written. So for that purpose, we have written the uh, device driver framework. Uh, you know. The, the, the drivers that we are going to write for these um, uh, peripherals uh, would uh, you know, make use of the device driver framework. And now, so if we, uh, if we look at this diagram, so some of the drivers uh, or some of the devices uh, might have their own ways of managing the memory and memory pools. So what we are allowing is we are allowing the drivers to have their own uh, memory pool management uh, code or libraries, or it could use one of the memory pool software libraries that comes along with uh, uh, ODP uh, code base. So we provide that uh, flexibility. So in the server platform, we expect that uh, uh, all the software libraries along with this uh, 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 device driver framework would be used to uh, uh, identify and solve the problem of um, platform being different uh, everywhere. So here, uh, I have shown the device driver framework only for packet I/O, but it would apply for other hardware accelerators as well. Let's say there's a PCI card with uh, crypto acceleration or compression acceleration the device driver framework would uh, uh, help in, uh, for those uh, uh, peripherals as well.
So um, I think that these are a few of the key components that we would like to add for uh, ODP uh, to address the uh, NFV challenges. Uh, he has already talked about uh, modular framework and how we uh, plan to use it in ODP. Uh, we would have the uh, platform discovery uh, module uh, which uh, we intend to use for identifying the uh, uh, platform and various components. It will also identify a list of libraries and uh, uh, you know the module loader would take that list of libraries and uh, uh, you know uh, load them uh, so that the application can use them. It will help us uh, in uh, registering the uh, various functionalities the components provide into the subsystem. Uh, and then we have the device driver framework. Uh, I think uh, we have a lot of work to do uh, in developing the drivers and you know the device driver framework is uh, going to help in that uh, direction. So now coming to the uh, uh, current status, uh, we have the modular framework created. I think we have reached a good uh, state. Uh, we have, we have started using it already. We have created uh, various subcomponents. Uh, so currently we have uh, subcomponents created for uh, pool, buffer, packet. Uh, we did that for packet IO as well. And uh, uh, queues and schedulers are, uh, you know, uh, they are implemented as well. The uh, other thing that we wanted to do was uh, to get the uh, ODP DPDK repo into the uh, cloud framework. So uh, we have integrated that as a, a platform. Uh, so going forward, uh, at some point, we would like to uh, uh, retire the ODP DPDK repository and have it under uh, this uh, branch. So next, uh, so what we want to do uh, in next, probably, four to five months, I would say. Uh, the main, uh, or a lot of focus is going to be on the drivers. We are having a lot of discussions in this uh, uh, connect to understand what we would uh, like to do uh, in this space. Uh, we have looked at various solutions available currently uh, and uh, you know what are all the advantages and disadvantages. So we are trying to address uh, uh, you know, uh, we are trying to arrive at that uh, right solution, and I'm hoping that we will go back with a solution in mind so that we can implement in next uh, three to four months. Uh, next uh, major portion for us is uh, 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 optimizations. So right now we have used Linux generic as our code base to start off. Uh, writing these components. Uh, so we would look at uh, how can we optimize and uh, get, get the best performance uh, out of these uh, uh, components. Uh, obviously, we have to write the uh, platform discovery and uh, uh, library load infrastructure. Uh, there is some portion of that available uh, today, uh, but I think we need to enhance that and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, how we can make use of that uh, code base. The other goal uh, uh, has been uh, to have this single uh, repository for ODP. Uh, we have started discussion uh, in this connect. I think there are challenges, both technical as well as uh, business related challenges. So uh, uh, we will identify them and probably document and you know, uh, probable list of solutions and uh, you know, the uh, uh, steering committee can take decisions as to uh, how we want to move forward on that. So on this front, uh, uh, you know, we are discussing uh, some directory structure changes uh, so that the code base becomes more clear uh, for everyone. And along with that, it will uh, bring some uh, uh, build system changes as well. So. Uh, yes, from coding perspective, there is, uh, you know, the drivers and optimizations are the uh, priority. 
and then from the infrastructure perspective, there is a single repository, build system, and directory structure. So these are the, a few of the priorities that we are trying to address in the next uh, few months. So uh, that's all uh, from my side. Uh, have any questions? Is there a microphone? Yes. yes. So a very good presentation, Anupa. Um So the platform discovery, I'm very interested in this, and, and there's a, it, it sounds like your main goal is to be able to load at runtime the right libraries. Yes. Um, but there's another use case that is really gaining prominence in the ONAP community, in the NFE community. Uh, so ONAP is one of the management and orchestration open source collaborative projects. Okay. Um, it's getting a lot of momentum and uh, it stands for uh, Open Network Automation Platform or something like that. It's the combination of AT&T's eComp that they open source okay. and taking some things from OpenO, which was started by many of the uh, China operators. Okay. At any rate, um, there's a great deal of interest in the, at, at the orchestration level okay. for platform awareness, being able to orchestrate workloads to take, bring capable resources to bear okay. for certain BNFs. Okay. And this has been looked at before in um, OpenStack as well. And generally what's been happening is uh, Intel has been pushing um, enhanced platform awareness, which is Intel <coughs> trademark and proprietary technology. Okay. And so they're trying to push that quite heavily into that. And we're trying to uh, make you know, any awareness of you know, that piece to be abstracted. But what we need for the ARM ecosystem is we need standard ways to be able to, to advertise the capabilities of the platform. It's a great idea, and I would say that we, we would generally be quite in favor of platform awareness. Yeah. And, and then so orchestration can take advantage of capability uh, discovery. And then use the, we want, we want orchestration layers to be able to identify really capable ARM SOCs. And so I think that we really need to put some thought and some energy behind that use case as we develop that. Uh, I, I think ODP is a great place to incorporate platform discovery. That can be advertised. That the orchestration layer could query an API and say, "What is this chip? What what accelerators does it have? Or what you know, some some other way of identifying yes. how is it optimized?" Yes. And then, in the way that this, the way that I hope this is going to happen, is that um, through the definition of models, okay. which can be you know easily pluggable for different platform discovery APIs. So this is a, an extremely important use case that maybe hasn't been thought about in this group before. And as we develop these capabilities, I'd like to um, collaborate with, with the group and, and we can, I can bring some, I can provide some links and some documents that are being formed in ONAP they can give our people an idea of how this is being implemented and we can figure out how could we how could we create i think it's really important in the next year actually the next six months that we at least be able to spec out some some ways that you can model or discover yes um platform capabilities in arm socs or arm servers with nix yeah <coughs> it doesn't matter right yeah 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 so so on that part, um, uh, in the community, we have had some discussions around where this information should uh, reside. Is it with the orchestrator, or is it not with the orchestrator? 
So what we think at this point is that the information that resides with the orchestrator is at a more abstract level, as in it says, okay, this platform has a crypto accelerators with these many capabilities, but it does not say, for example, who is the manufacturer or what is the device. So that's where we think the platform discovery in ODP will come into picture. It knows that there's a crypto device, but this platform discovery has to identify what is the model, who is the manufacturer, and what is the driver. So right now, we have made that distinction. But I think as these things evolve, we should be able to uh, adopt uh, to, to these developments. So I think, uh, I think the first step is I can start forwarding some links to uh, some of the high level specifications and models that are being looked at. And we can see what people are trying to, what kinds of things are they trying to discover. So look, it's as simple as how many how many CPUs or virtual CPUs do you have? Okay. How much memory do you have? These kinds of things. But then, do you have DPDK? Do you have accelerators? I can see that other stuff, you know, being you know being promoted. Okay. Okay. Uh, I had a question about the. Uh, what are you doing about hybrid systems where there's uh, x86 and ARM together running ODP? Um, so we have made that distinction in terms of uh, architecture. So when we say we have a single binary, it is, uh, you know, you have to compile it for x86 versus uh, ARM. But uh, we expect that this framework that we are developing uh, including the device driver framework, they would work for x86 as well. So we don't, uh, um, uh, we, we are trying to address both the architectures at this point. Okay. So. Uh, pardon me if I missed this in the presentation, but uh, one of the things I'm trying to understand, and maybe can you, you can point to it in one of the diagrams, okay. um, how, does the, how does the VNF get to the optimized I.O. In the hardware, is it, um, it, it with ODP? Is it through like a bird IO or something like that? Yes. So, uh, yes. So, uh, for the uh, VNF running in the VM, it ah. could be a word IO network device or it could be a, a virtual function that's uh, directly assigned to that. Uh, VM. So on top of those devices, uh, we have the uh, drivers that are provided by uh, ODP. Yeah. And that's how the VNF accesses that uh, device. Okay, so this, this VNet concept is somewhat being somewhat standardized. Uh, I have, the VNIC, I have just put a generic name over there. That's nothing but the uh, what IO network device. By VF, you mean SRI or V devices that have virtual functions, or yes, okay. yeah, yeah. But from an application standpoint, it's just the packed I/O interface with oh, the yeah. APIs that ODP provides, and so what those actually map to is part of this framework and discovery process. Okay. Um, yeah. So, but, but for, so the whole idea is the application doesn't have to worry about those details. It just simply knows I, I open this device and you know, read and write off. And can in this model can multiple v, uh, can multiple VMs then access uh, a particular NIC? Um, you share you know sharing it. Yes. So so if you have a NIC, let's say with uh, multiple VMs, yeah, then you could have one VM assigned to this VM and another VM assigned to uh, okay. another uh, VM. So I think. That part would be, um, what to say, it would be controlled by the orchestrator or whoever it is. But as far as ODP is concerned, it appears as a device in the VM. And the frameworks and the platform discovery would uh, you know, identify what that device is and you know, uh, identify the right set of drivers for that device.
Um, a quick one. For, if you do the, if you're doing the, if you do all these changes that you're talking about, Brody P, you've got your next steps all done. Yeah. Is there anything standing in the way of NFB um, vendors deploying this, or is there something still, some future steps still needed before people will really make use of ODP or, or with NFB? Um, I would think that, so one, one question definitely that we need to answer is, uh, how are we going to have the drivers for all possible NICs? Right. So assuming that we solve that problem, I feel we are at that stage where you know uh, users can start using this. So yes, I, I, I guess there will be some minor tweaks to be addressed in the, uh, like a production kind of environment. But I would think that the major components that we wanted to develop would be available. I, I would just add to that, the, one of the other uh, features that we're working on here is packaging this whole framework and, and, and binaries so that it can be distributed as a standard <coughs> Red Hat or SUSE or whatever. And that means that, that rather than going to a Git repo, you know, you just assume that, that ODP is available as part of that distribution. Other questions? Okay, good. Thank you so much.